So I need this matter investigated and investigated thoroughly. Because mm -hmm. I need to find out, especially what is burning me. Why was I not allowed to go over? My mom saying that she's immobile, her hips and knees are gone. You can accompany on the age children. But these old people going back to like child stage and once you are their primary caretaker, you should be allowed to go with them. So I really need this thing investigated thoroughly, especially the part where she would have gone from secondary care into primary ICU. When I keep asking her, I want to know and help me understand how my mother got to that place of secondary care where I kept hearing she was stable to primary ICU. And all she was telling me, but you know your mother have COVID. My mother was in a good place. If she was not able to help herself, get them off the bed and all of that, and she wasn't getting the care and attention she needed in secondary care, where nobody was there to help her, of course she would deteriorate to that stage. She's presently deceased. Well, she would have proven to be positive on the 9th of September, and she was moved from where we were in quarantine at Savannah Hotel to Harrison's Point. At that point, I am her primary caregiver. My mom is immobile. She cannot even walk well. Her hips and knees are gone, and I pleaded with these people to let me go with my mom so I can take care of her, but I was denied. Anyway, when my mom was there, I did not even know the telephone numbers because they're not even in the phone book. So what I did was the defense force officer, I looked for his number when he had called me and I called him and asked him for the number. Anyway, every day I'm calling constantly to get through to my mom. Could not get through these numbers, always busy, no one answers. And when they do answer, you never can see a doctor. Hardly ever. They will tell you the doctor is there with the patients. You have to wait on the report. They will call you back, but you never get a response. Anyway, when I got through at some point, I will always say, your mom is stable. She's doing well. She's in a good place, right? And then it was like six days. I was proven to be positive, and that was on the 15th. I called. I asked about my mom to be told that she was not there. I said, how you mean? She has moved? Your mom has been discharged, I think. They were not even certain if she was still there or if she was discharged. I had so much trouble getting to find the truth, but I just wanted to get to Harrison's point at that point in time to see if she was there. When I got there, I did not even get to see my mom. I asked the doctor repeatedly where she was, if she was there or if she really was discharged to be told she had moved. So that statement alone, I did not know what she meant by she had moved. So I asked her, move, move, but to where? Because if she'd be moved to a primary isolation at one of the centers at the schools, then my son is there. I will let him to take care of her. She came back and she told me she wasn't sure. She will have to check the computer. At that point, I said, how long does it take to check a computer? You know, she started getting an attitude. I persisted and asked her where my mom was. Was she there? Oh, she came out and me, I think your mom has been discharged, you know. I said, discharged? And I'm her primary caregiver. How can my mom be discharged? I'm her next of kin. I'm the one who called and asked for her every day. How can my mom be discharged? A woman that can't even walk and nobody call me? She said, okay, I will check. The very next day, I came back downstairs asking where my mom was did not get an answer either. Actually, I was, I can say I was accosted. The nurse carried me on in a very aggressive, aggressive manner. Weren't you down here before? I said, but that's my mom. Obviously, I have not seen her since the knife. And y'all don't seem to know where she is. You know? I went back upstairs and at that point, I heard them calling my name and my grandson's name. And we were shipped out over there. But before we were shipped out over there, the nurse told me she's going to go and check the computer. When she checked the computer, she just told me your mom has been moved. She's still here, but she has been moved. Now that had me real disturbed. I got the QC, I called back again to be told my mom was had gone from secondary isolation to primary isolation. I asked them, but how did my mom get there? At this point, when y'all was telling me she's stable, now she's in primary ICU. 
I said, can somebody tell me how she would have gone to this stage? But even prior to that, before I had left Savannah Hotel, I forgot this. I asked the doctor that was there, how did my mom, how did they not know where my mom was, if she was really discharged or if she was actually there, if she was there still? They're telling me they're not sure. It's at that point that I did, she came back and told me, but your mom diagnosis is not good at all. I said, why? Her blood pressure and her blood sugar has gone through the roof. I said, but my mom's blood sugar and blood, blood pressure is always regularized. She don't ever be sick. It don't ever go over. How will she have gotten to that stage? I told you all from day one that she's hypertensive and a diabetic. I said her medication is in her bag. I told you all that from the very first day and even after. It was at that point that I heard her say, nurse, nurse, get Marjorie Williams' bag. I was in total shock. You mean to tell me my mom would have been there for six days without getting her medication? At that point, I, the nurse came back and said, oh yes, her medication is in the bag. I don't understand that. How could you not know from day one a patient come into your hospital? Will you not have questioned them? No, she see she is a 79 year old lady and the protocol at Harrison's Point, you have to fill out an application form before you can even step foot into that establishment. My mother never would have filled out that online form because she don't know anything about the computer. You want to tell me you can tell her daughter to fill it out. This modern technology, you can fill out an application with a link from anywhere in Barbados or the world. I had to end up filling out my mom's form then that day, the 15th. It, so it looked as if she was admitted on that day, right? I backdated it though, right? But you would have now found out all of these things because in the list, it has all these different illnesses that you will have had and things like that. Anywhere was shipped out of there. Only when it got by QC and I called to hear that my mom had taken a turn for the worse. She had developed pneumonia. By the next day, the doctor went into something different. Her heart and her kidneys were gone. They were going. They had been compromised. I asked, but why is that? My mom left just like us. All of us were asymptomatic. My mom was not unwell. We were all asymptomatic. Right? I cannot believe the extent to how my mother came down so quickly. So I keep questioning the doctor. By the evening, 4.48, my phone rang. And it was Dr. Lovell telling me, Annette, I have very unfortunate news for you. And I told him at that point, are you telling me my mom has died? And he told me yes. And I said, what is the reason? Why did she die? Did she die because she stopped breathing? Did she die because she just passed out because of her kidneys and her heart. He told me she actually died from heart failure. She died from heart failure. Her heart had stopped and there had tried unsuccessfully for hours mm -hmm. to bring her back, but her heart failed. And it was at that point I told him, but you know, I told y'all, this drug causes heart failure, kidney failure. And that's when he told me he was sorry. And that's the last time I heard from Dr. Isaac Harrison's point. Go ahead. Well, I made a complaint to the clinical. <laughs>